The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it said, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly that than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. The New King James Version says, the one that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. We have a God, if you have been, how many of us follow the Holy Ghost uh, program? Okay. God bless you in Jesus' name. I want to talk about beyond expectations. That has been the, you know, the, the, that, that was the Holy Ghost uh, team. And I pay attention. Actually, for those who listened to Daddy Gio on Friday, you know, I was like, wow. <laughs> because it's just like, just like, because I finished my preparation on, I, I have my message on Tuesday. I knew on Sunday that I would minister this Sunday, so by Tuesday, you know, I've finished my, my sermon. And when I was listening, and I sent it to multimedia on Thursday, so I didn't even change anything since then. But when you listen to that, did you, it was like it was speaking what the Lord wants us to hear today. Our God can do beyond what you can ask. Our God can exceed our expectation. And one of the things I learned from that scripture, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, is that sometimes we don't even know what to ask. And because of the way we were brought up, many of us, our prayer point is really for the enemy to die. So most of the time, we don't know what to pray for. But the Bible said the Holy Spirit Helps us. Correct? Praise the living Jesus. Okay. We don't know what to pray for, but we have a God in heaven that says, even before you ask, I answered. Why would somebody answer you when you have not asked? You need something from me, and you have not even asked. And I said, I've answered you. That is the God that we serve. So before it comes to your mind at all that you need something, as a father, he already prepared for you. This God can do beyond expectations. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, if you read the story of Hannah, if you read verse 11, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11, Hannah asked for a son. Say, Lord, if you, can, if you can just remember thy servant and, 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 and just give me a son, I will give it back to you. That is what she asked for. When you go to 4 Samuel chapter 2, 4 Samuel chapter 2, you, you can, we can read that. 4 Samuel chapter 2, I want to read it so that we hear what God is saying there. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bought three sons and two daughters. She asked for one. God gave her six. Yeah, Samuel plus additional three boys and two girls. Some people are still doing the math when I say six. She had, how do they call those who have five at a time? It was five at a time. Huh? Could triple, yeah. Yeah, or if you get it, good. If you don't get it, nobody knows anyway. She asked for one. God gave her Samuel. And God now visited that again. So God can do beyond what you ask. In First King chapter 3, First King chapter 3, if you read verse 9, First King chapter 3, if you read verse 9, Solomon offered to God. And that night, the Lord visited him and said, you have given so much. What do you need? The new king said, Lord, all I need. Because he read the story of the people he is about to lead. 
as powerful as Moses was, he called them stiff. Even God called the people this man want to lead. Stiff, naked people. They are stubborn. And he said, Lord, I need wisdom to judge your people. And the Bible said, if you read the uh, if you read verse 10, that's First Kings chapter 3. If you read verse 10, the Bible said the speech pleased the Lord. They asked him, please the Lord. And the Lord said, that that you have asked, I granted it unto you. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart. He asked for wisdom. God gave him wisdom. Go with me to verse 13. First King chapter 3. If you go to verse 13, uh, verse 12 actually. He said, Behold, I have done according to your words. But verse 13 said, And I've also given you not only wisdom that you asked for, that that you didn't ask for. Honor I give to you. Riches I give to you. He said, not only that, if you obey my word, if you walk in the cancers that your dad walked through, David. He said, I will also grant you long life. Not only that you will have wisdom, not only that you will be rich, not only that men and women will honor you the days of your life, you will also live long to enjoy the riches. God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. He has the resources. He has the power. So I prophesy to somebody here today, even before you ask, the Lord will answer you. That that you are looking up unto God that seems difficult is not difficult to God. Now, it has been established that God can do beyond what we can ask. We have seen sample. We've had testimonies of people that ask for a child. When you watch the Holy Ghost night, even in our own church here, people ask for one, they have two. You see people ask for one, they have four. You see people ask for ones, they have five. So God can exceed our expectation. I'm talking on beyond expectation. The question is, why is it that we are not experiencing this beyond expectation? I call it limitations. Two, beyond expectation. Number one, when we dishonor God, when we disobey God, when we fail in our responsibility, either as a father or as a mother, you totally block yourself. From receiving from the Lord. Let's look at the case of Eli. The Bible recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 13. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 13. For those who know the story of Samuel. Samuel is the priest in Israel. God specifically called him. Made him priest and promised that he will be priest forever. That is his generation will continue to be priest. But the Bible said, this is what the Lord said. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows. Because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. Hear what the Bible said. The Lord said, I have told him. Just like Lord is warning you every day that the path you are taking is wrong. That what you are doing is not right. Many people in, 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 in home, they will cancel you. Elders will talk to you. Mother-in-law will talk. Father-in-law will talk. Brother-in-law will talk. Everybody will talk. Friend will talk. But you just believe it is just you that is right. You will come to church, you will hear the message, but you are, the, you are just the right person for whatever that is coming from your mind. God said, I told him, your children are dishonoring me. I told him, you, 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 you are not correcting these children. How many of us, just say, oh, it's the law of the land, we can't touch the children. 
Let them do whatever they want. People tell you, the children, you said, don't worry, I'm, I'm rich. Let them enjoy themselves. God said, God said, you did not restrain them. And the consequences was bad. I pray that in the name that is above every other name, mercy will speak today in the name of Jesus. That is this story in Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7, you can read from verse 1 to 7. The, the, the priest and the prophet in the house of the Lord, they, they went to prophet Zechariah and said, every May, that is on the fifth month, we usually mourn and fast to the Lord. Should we fast in this coming May? They, they fast, they pray, but hear what the Lord said to them. Let me, let me read from verse 5. It says, so to, say to all the people of the land and to the priest, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months, during the 70 years, did you really fast for me? When you eat and when you drink, did you not eat and drink for yourselves? Hear what the Lord is saying here. Please pay attention. When, eat for yourself, it says, says, should you not have obeyed the words which the Lord proclaimed through the former prophets when Jerusalem and the cities around were inhabited and prosperous and the south and the lowland were inhabited. God said, (laughs) when I bless you and you were prospering the land, When you asked for children and I gave it to you. When you were poor and you said, Lord, bless me. And I bless you, you become rich. When you were sick and you said, Lord, heal me. And I healed you. During that time, did you obey after you got these blessings? After you got the blessings, the children now need to be in practice on Sunday. So sorry, Lord. The children you gave me have a practice on Sunday, no church. You see, one thing I notice: the people who go to those practice with, many of them, I noticed this when I was in the office. In the Orthodox Church, they have services on Fridays, on Saturday, and on Sunday. Those people you see that goes on Sunday, they already done their service on Friday night. There is a way the system works. You have to understand it. Don't ignore God because of the blessing God has given to you. Don't, don't, not when you run into trouble that you now start fasting and praying. You can actually fast a very, very enjoyable fasting like my children fast. Yeah, my children will just, will just we will start a fast in the morning. Then suddenly you see some of them eating before 12. He said, what happened? He said, fasting is for a time. <laughs> so yours could be from 6 to 6. But if my own is from 5 to <laughs> <laughs> Enjoyable fasting. When they were a little bit younger, they, was, they would finish eating. They would say, oh, yeah, I started another fast. <laughs> Enjoyable fasting. Now they've grown up now, so they can do 6 to 6. When things are going well, remember the Lord that gave you the power to make words. That's what the Lord communicated to them there. Number two, ingratitude, insolence. Insolence, it was when I was preparing this, I just heard insolence. I didn't know the meaning. So I quickly go to the dictionary. I don't know what it means. It means insolence means rude and disrespectful behavior. I said, wow. Unfaithful overseers. When God bless you and you are not faithful. When God bless you and you rudely and unfaithfully and disrespectfully tell the Lord that gave you the word or the blessings that it is the power of my hand that made this for me. I'm very, very good at what I do. 
I pray the hands of the Lord will rest upon us to do the right thing in Jesus' name. The story of in, in Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, you can read 20 to 24. Luke chapter 19, 20 to 24. is the story of the, a master that, that called 10 servants and gave them 10 minutes. That is, he has 10 servants. He has, let's say, $10. And he gave each of them just one minute each and said, invest with this. The story, I will use the first and the last. Each person was given what? One mina. Because it was ten servants and ten minas. You can read Luke chapter, there are a lot of, you can read different versions of this, but Luke chapter 19, so, so that you get this one right. The Bible said, then another one came, that is when it was time for them to report to the master. He said, then another one came, saying, master, here is your mina, which I have kept Put away in a handkerchief, for I feared you. Because Before I get here, the first one that came said, the one you gave me, I've turned it to ten. You gave me one. I've multiplied it. I've increased it to ten. But this one came. This is the last one. <laughs> he came. He said, I know you are, you are a wicked master. I know you reap where you don't sow. Now, when this man was giving him the money to invest, this servant didn't say, Master, don't give me. Because when you come back, I know you are a wicked person. He didn't say that. He collected it. And he said all that he wanted to say. And the master said, the master said, and he said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you. You wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere, that is a wicked man. Collecting what I did not deposit. Reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the barn? That at my coming, I might have collected with interest. Verse 24. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has ten minutes. The master said, by what you have said, I will judge you. God gave each and every one of us opportunity. As I was, as I was praying this morning on this, on, this particular, on this particular topic, somehow the Holy Spirit gave me an analogy, a, 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 a sample, an analogy, and said, when you were in secondary school or high school, at that point, every one of us start determining which course to go for. One decide that I want to be a teacher. One decide that I want to be a doctor. Some want to be a lawyer. Some want to be an accountant. Some want to be. Some say we, I'm not going. I'm not going to. I'm going to go to college. I'm done. Just decide. That opportunity was given to everybody at that level. No one will say, don't go for this. The Lord now remind me, if someone who decides to go for uh, these doctors that does brain, right? I already call them now. Neurologists. I think I, I was told that they make the highest money, right? Is that true? Huh? Huh? Something like that. that, that but they make a lot of money. So if you that decided that, you know what, I'm not going to college, you now compare to them and say, ah, God, why did you bless this man so much? Ah, as a human being, as a human being, I said, God, if I were you, I would knock him on the head. Because the opportunity was given to everybody, but you choose. The question is, what are you choosing today? And what you, your choice today is, is determining maybe you will have beyond expectation blessing or not. I pray for somebody here today. You will make the right choice in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number three, and I will stay on this for a while too. Physically close to Jesus, but spiritually far from him. Many people come into church, carry big Bible. On your iPad, on your phone, you downloaded different versions of the Bible. 
But if they ask you to go and open the Bible on your app, some of you, you will look for it so much before you can find it. You downloaded it. You carry a big Bible. And pastor said, can somebody, please help me open to Nahum. Someone said, now, now what? Is that in the Bible? You've been carrying that Bible for a long time. You don't even know that something like that exists in the Bible. They are physically close to Jesus. But spiritually, they are far from him. They come to church. They call them a born again Christian. They know them. They speak in tongue. But when you see them where they are settling matters, you will hide. Because they can tear people apart. When you see them when they are angry, it's difficult for them to forgive. They are close to Jesus physically, but spiritually they are far from him. How do you expect beyond expectation? The Bible says, can we be in sin and expect grace to abound? The Bible said, God forbid. Look at this story. The Bible, in, in, in Matthew chapter 15 verse 8, Matthew chapter 15 verse 8, Jesus looked at the Pharisees and the people. He said, these people, with their mouth, they are very close to me. <laughs> but their heart, far from me. Far from me. I, I mean, I don't know about you. I, I'm, always, I'm always very open. I don't know, maybe it's just me because I know we have a lot of very spiritual and very powerful people in this place, so they don't behave like human beings sometimes. But sometimes, you know, when you are praying, you are just praying, you are just praying, your mind just suddenly go to that pondered yam that is going to happen by 6 p.m., and you are praying, you know? <laughs> they have in their mouth, you are, you are but inside of you, you are thinking of what that person did to you. In their mouth, they are closer to Jesus, but their heart very far away. Let's look at a case study of uh, Judas, Judas Carrot. Let me tell you this one for us. Uh, so, some of us, uh, we receive one miracle from Jesus, and we tell Jesus, bye-bye. We just say, Jesus, we don't need you again. Look at what happened in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 from 4 to 17. You can read the story. Is the, when the madman of Gadara was healed. And they dressed him up. Uh, and he sat with Jesus. Uh, the Bible said the people, the, 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 the people that lost their, their peak, <laughs> they ran to the town and said, we have seen wonder. And the people came, and when they got there and saw the madman sitting with Jesus, the Bible said they pleaded with Jesus to leave them. One miracle. I, I imagine that, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm believing that there will be some sick people in that town. They have seen some people that will need healing or deliverance or something in that town. They didn't say, Jesus, we have so many of these people here. Please come and help us. They said, Jesus, just leave us. Can you relate? Can you come back to your own life and see those, that one miracle you got? What happened after that miracle? You tell Jesus, I got what I need. Thank you. Leave me alone. When you discuss with people, they say, leave God out of this. Do we say that sometimes? When we are angry and we really want to speak our mind, we say, just leave scripture and God out of there. Let my flesh speak to your flesh so that you know who I am. I'm under the influence of my flesh and I will speak my mind. We take God. By the time we are blessed, we say, God, I know you bless me, but when it comes to making decision on this money, leave me alone. Some people will tell you, God, you gave me brain now. You gave me brain. Let me think here. Give me a break. <laughs> we are telling the Holy Spirit to give us a break. Holy Spirit will not give you a break. <laughs> Some people didn't say amen. <laughs> Look at the story in John chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. John chapter 12, John chapter 12 verse 4 to 6. The Bible says, but one of his disciples, Judas Kairos, Simon's son, 
who will betray him said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Is that a good statement to say? Is that a good thing to say? I said, Jesus, this thing should have not been wasted. He would have used it to take care of the poor. That is his mouth. That was his mouth. Let's hear what the heart is saying. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had a money box and he used to take what was put in it. <laughs> the reason he want the money to come is not for the poor. He was physically close to Jesus, but he's a thief. He's physically close to Jesus, he's a liar. He's physically close to Jesus. He's going to hell. Can you, can you relate back to this? Because when we read it, we say Judas carrot. We, leave, we just stop there. It's Judas, so this, is, this is not me. And as soon as you get out of the church, they call you. Where are you? I'm at home. You are in the premises of Living Spring. You are telling somebody, I'm home. Are you, are you closer to here? No, five minutes, and you know you have not even left. Close to Jesus. But our heart. You are close to Jesus. It's easy for you to curse. You are close to Jesus. You can lay your hands on your spouse. You are close to Jesus. You are cursing your children. You are close to Jesus. You cannot forgive others. The master of the universe. Many of us are close to Jesus because of my time. Let's, let's look at this because if we don't look into all of these things, we will miss it. In, in, in account of Judas Caroth, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 20 to 25, Matthew 26, we can read 20 to 25. The Bible said, when evening come, he sat down, that was Jesus, he sat down with the, with the twelve. Now as they were eating, he said, as surely I said to you, one of you will betray me. Lord Jesus, 12 people sat down. One knew that he's going to betray Jesus. And Jesus said it among the 12. He said, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, nine, 12. One of you will betray me. Immediately, I knew Jesus. I mean, if I were Judas Carroll at that point, I'd say, ah, like the, like the children would say, they got me. Our Lord said, Jesus, you got me. You got me, Lord. You got me, Lord. You got me, you got me, you got me. How I, I surrender. No, no, I'm not betraying you again. One of you will betray me. He was so close to Jesus. The warning was coming. Don't go to hell. Jesus said, one of you here, 12 out of you, one will betray me. Not only that. Let's listen now. And as they were, and, and they were exceedingly sorrowful. You know, when you are in the midst of people, and suddenly they said, one of you here, you stole something. And you know you didn't steal. How do you feel? You feel bad. That's what happened to the other 11. They were sorrowful. Why would Jesus say one of you? Hey, it's not me. Why should I be among those who would do this? They were sorrowful. And Jesus, they, they, as they were sorrowful, each of them begins to say to him, Lord, is it I? He answered and said, he who dip his hands in, with me in the dish will betray me. <laughs> If you read another either in, in Luke or Acts, I think it's either Luke or, or John. You know, Jesus told the closest one that say, Who is that? If you read account there, Jesus said, The one that will, the one when I dip and put in his mouth, he will be the one. In this one, he said, This one will dip pando. So what Jesus is saying is that if I dip my hand, the one that dip immediately is the one. At that point, Judas Carroll should know that, ah, this man got me. Because I was about to dip when this man is stood by. He would have said, Lord, you got me. You got me. I surrender. I'm, not, I'm so close to Jesus. So close to warning. So close to pleading. So close to be saved. Not only that, the, the last straw. The last straw. He said this, no, second one. He said, he said, he said, the son of man in this go just as it, is, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he has not been born. First problem. 
Second one. Then the third one, Jesus said, this person oh, that is here right now, it would have been better if he's not born. Ah! At that point, I would say, my mama must not hear this. Is my mama must not hear this. Lord, I'm sorry. This course is too much for me. He refused. He refused to say no. Are you hearing this? Let's look at the last one. The last one. Then Judas, who was, who was betraying, is in the process, betraying. For those who did English, Gerund. He was in the act. Answered. You know, when you, know when, you are, <laughs> when you are doing something and you are so bold in it, they will say, it's not me. Let's do the test now. I know it's not me. He will be the first person to run forward. Judas Caro said, let's read it. He said, Rabbi, is it I? Jesus now said to him, you have said it. Uh, what else do you, let me put it down this way. I said, sir, what they just said there that somebody did in this place, was I the one that did? The answer I will be expecting is no. You now said, ah, you said it. Ah, that's a signal. What Jesus said was that it is you. So now you are exposed. There shouldn't be any, any reason to say, I will continue. But he didn't stop. I pray for somebody today. The cancer, the knowledge, the wisdom that God has made available to you, you will not ignore it in the name of Jesus. Many warnings. Thank God for living spring. Thank God for this church. Thank God for our pastor. Truth is being told in this place. So if you are misbehaving, it's not our fault. If you are misbehaving, it's not. The truth is being told in this place. The authentic word of God is being preached in this place. So if you are different from us, it's not lack of warning. It's not lack of counseling. It is because you made up your mind to be that. Because of my time, somehow they didn't give me time anymore. I think they are enjoying me. I can't see anything again. Praise the living Jesus. Now, we've heard about these limitations. What is it that I can do? I mean, you can just reverse those things. <laughs> you know, but what is it that I can do to enjoy this great privilege, exceedingly abundantly blessing that the Lord has prepared for me. How can I get uh, these great promises? Number one, when you sincerely honor God and you fulfill his promises or your vows, then God will go beyond your expectation. The reason God, and remember Hannah again, was that her promise that I will give this child to you, she fulfilled it. The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 24 that when the child was weaned, you know, when, when, when she had weaned him, she took him up and delivered him to prophet Eli. That vow, he, he fulfilled it. That promise, he fulfilled it. Well, number two, when we handle the master's business diligently, he will exceed our expectation. How do you do the work of God? How do you help your brothers? How do you help your sisters? Do you stand in the position of the good Samaritans and help others? How do you invest in the opportunity? How do you bring return to Jesus? How do you say, Lord, I will spend one hour of my eight hours to preach Jesus? I will spend just two hours of my Sabbath day to just come and worship you. Many of us, we are still, for those who are watching me, you're like, God bless you richly. This is for you. Many of you are still holding on to COVID. You know, six feet distance is important. Me go among people who can breathe on you. It's dangerous. I don't trust people anymore. 
the Lord will have mercy on you. You need to come back. We've been coming back now for how many? More than a year or less. Yeah, more than a year. None of us has reported any COVID. Let somebody say amen. amen. And no one will catch any disease in this place. Amen. It is time for you to come back. No more excuse. Fulfill your vow. Diligently serve the master. The one that they gave one to, he multiplied it to ten. And you know what happened? They added to him. Why they were telling the master and said, he got, he got 10 already. Why do you want to take this one and give it to him? The master said, I exceed expectation. When you bring fruit and your fruit abide, he said, if you ask the father anything in my name, it shall be done unto you. So when you diligently handle the master's work correctly, he will exceed your expectation. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. The Bible said, therefore, take heed how you hear. For whoever has to him, more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken from him. That that you have, not one will take it from you in the name of Jesus. Number three, can you break the alabaster bottle for Jesus? That expensive, valuable property that you head on to. When I see somebody that is staging, somebody who cannot release anything from their pocket or from their wallet or from their bank account to give to anybody, if I want to describe them, I say, ah, if you want to collect money from this person, you have to realize that it's like you are taking his or her kidney. You know, he won't let, <laughs> you know, you don't allow people to take your kidney. Some people are like that. When you want to take something from them, it's like you are killing them. That's the way they behave. As if that that they have has not been given to them. Can you break the alabaster oil for Jesus? That that is so valuable to you. If Jesus said, give it to me today. Many of our time is so expensive. Can you give that time? And, 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 and to the glory of God. Anytime I come on Friday and I see choir are still here by 10 o'clock. Every Friday. Can we clap for Jesus for choir? That is an investment. And for encouragement to the choir, that investment will yield greater results. Yeah. Not just you. Your generation yet unborn. Do you know many of us today, the grace we enjoy to this point, was the prayer of your mother. Prayer of your father. It's not you. I don't know how many of you was like me when we were in college. I was not in SCU in college. I was born as a Christian. We were very, because I was born as a Christian, I grew up in church. A son of a general overseer in Kianes. I was physically close to Jesus. Holiness, I was very far from Jesus. I didn't do bad things. But what everybody is doing as a youth, ah, we don't want to miss out. So when things are working for you, and you knew you didn't fast that much, you didn't pray that much, for you to get what those SU guys are getting, for those who are holy, because some of those SU guys, we know where we meet. They will go to the fellowship in campus, then we know where we, where we meet. But for those who are holy, what they are getting. Some of you, you get better than them. Have you ever sat down and think, why? The day I became worker, I decided that physically and spiritually, I will be close to Jesus. I hope somebody will make that decision today. Mark chapter 14, verse 3 to 9. Mark chapter 14, verse 3 to 9. I will read verse 9. When the woman broke the alabaster oil and they were complaining, why did you do this? Why that, why that? Jesus said, as surely I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached, in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told as a memorial unto her. That investment, I don't know how many of us we're here on Sunday when the projection of how the church with the sanctuary will look like. Do we like it? 
was beautiful. It was beautiful. And we said we should give memorial offering. Some of us, if you are not here last Sunday, so get your form before you leave and fill it out. We said, let's give memorial offering. Some of us, we, we, we refuse to collect the form. Some of us, we don't want to. I've been in this church for over 20 years. I always have issue when they say, Brother Larry is, is, and Brother Tokba is this. I say, ah, don't, don't braggadoce us now. We're also long here now. Brother Larry knew that I always fight him over that. But, but, but what I'm saying is that I've seen, I've seen people, people give to God. I've seen people giving to God. When I came, I, when I see people come forward, they will say, who, those who can give 1,000, and I see people come forward, my heart be like, boo, 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 boo. $1,000? Somebody will just give? And I discovered that the same people, when you watch, just stay, pay attention, it's the same people that will be able to come for 2,000. It's the same people that will be able to come for 5,000. It's the same people that will be able to come for 10,000. It's the same people today that will give 100,000. You that cannot give 1,000 that time, you are still unable to give 1,000 today. Did you ever think of this and trace your step? Jesus said, wherever this preaching, wherever this sermon is preached, this woman will be mentioned. In years to come, your children will flow in abundance because of what you are doing today. The vineyard you don't cultivate, you see your children enjoying in that vineyard all over the world because of what you are doing today. I remember, I know my time is, is up now. I remember growing up. My mom, it doesn't matter as long as you say you are for Jesus. Once, even if you have, <laughs> even if your fruit is showing that you have no idea who Jesus is. But as long as you come in the name of the Lord to my mom, you will be taken care of for Jesus. For Jesus. What, what normally they won't buy for us. They will buy for these people that said they are minister of God. And some of us, some of them, before the, because they will come for this one week revival program. And by the time the revival is over, you see men coming with cutlass that your prophet has slept with our wives. Prophet. Some of them, the, one day they pack every of my mom's gold and my dad. The prophet packed it and ran away. But today, to the glory of God, the children are enjoying it. They are enjoying it. And, and you know what? She's alive also to enjoy it too. She's alive today. The woman that used to walk and ride the bike. Now she has a car and a driver. She doesn't go to farm anymore. And I'm saying some, many of you, you are richer than me. You have to do it for your mom. I'm not that rich. But God has blessed me to bless that woman that did so much for me. So if somebody is telling you, yeah, yeah, your mother is a winch, you better ask, ask them to shut up. Even if she's a winch, let her drive car we don't, so that she won't fly on top. Just let her begin to fly on the road. <laughs> because if you give her a car, she won't have to do air transportation. She'll be doing grand. <laughs> your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, take care of them and God will bless you in return. Amen. When you do this, then God begins to say, who is that? I want to bless somebody. I want to increase somebody. I want to exceed somebody's expectation. Who is that righteous and faithful servant that I may bless him? Is there anyone in the house of my master's soul that I may bless him? That's what King David said. And they said, there is one is Mephibosheth. Because of what Joseph, his father, did, a crippled man now begins to sit in palace and eat in palace and have servants that are working for him because of what his father has done. Can we please stand? God is waiting 
to bless somebody. God is waiting to bless somebody. God is waiting to exceed our expectation. God is waiting to do beyond what you ask and what you have not asked. What you have not even have in your mind. God is waiting for that faithful servant. God is waiting for someone who we today and said, I surrender to you, Jesus. I know, I know I've not been perfect. I know I'm physically close to you, Jesus, but my spiritually I'm far from you. I do things that if, if we are to put my record on the screen, I will not be able to show up in this church anymore. But today I'm coming back to you. And I want you to begin to, to talk to God now. I'm coming back to you, Lord. I'm coming back to you, Lord. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer today. I want you to begin to go back to God now. I say, Lord, I know I've been far from you. I don't want to miss out of this great, great blessing you are giving unto us. I don't want to miss out. You know, it, it doesn't matter how far unfaithful, how ungrateful, how disobedient, how insolent you have been to the Lord. Jesus is saying, come unto me now. Jesus is saying, you know, the prodigal son, when he comes to his senses, he said, in my, master, in my father's house, we, we have abundance. Why should I be suffering? When, 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 when Peter saw how he betrayed his friend, Jesus, the Bible said he wept. He, he, he wept and Jesus wept for him. As the Lord, I'm coming back home, Lord. I want, to, I want to be closer to you physically. I want to be closer to you spiritually. Change me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Just the lady, draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord, to the precious spirit inside. And as they, as they render this, this, I want you to, to tell the Lord, I don't want to miss out of this great blessing, Lord. Today I surrender all to you. Draw me nearer to you, Lord. Get me to you, Lord. Spiritually, Lord, I want to be closer to you. I know I practice things that I shouldn't be doing, but Lord, I've come. Have mercy on me today, Lord. We have a father. We have a father. Those attitudes, those actions. You have been in church for years. <laughs> but when they, when they look at your attitude, uh, ah, it does not resemble someone. It does not resemble someone who is, who is that close to Jesus. Uh, look, at, look at Jesus now calling you. Revelation 20 verse 3. Sorry, Revelation 3 verse 20. Revelation 3 verse 20. It, it, Jesus said, I and my father, we are the door. We are knocking. In your mind, in your heart now, you know. You know you need to move closer to Jesus spiritually and not just physically. Ask the Lord, I am here. I am here. I am here, Lord. I don't want to miss out of this great, great blessing that is coming. I don't want to miss out of this wonderful blessing that is coming. Father, draw me nearer to you. Call me to yourself, Lord. Set me free from every bondage and hindrance, Lord. Make me whole, Lord. I, I don't want to be like Judas Carrot uh, that got several mornings. Uh, at every point, Jesus uh, was telling him, uh, you are going to hell. Uh, and, and, and he just refused. Uh, we don't want to be a child of perdition. That a blessing coming. That blessing the Lord has given unto you. It's time for you to say, Lord, I am yours. I'm ready to do your will. I'm ready to do your work, Lord. Draw me, Lord, to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you are not born again, if you are not born again, there is nothing, there's nothing that anyone can do. There's nothing you can do as well. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that can help every one of us. And the moment you give your life to Jesus, the moment you give your life to Jesus, He gives you the power. To be able to live a holy life. And the moment you begin to live a holy life. 
God begins to go beyond your expectation. God begins to exceed your expectation. The blessing you didn't pray for, the goodness you didn't ask for, God begins to release to you. So if you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus. I'm not calling you out, but you can just signify to Jesus wherever you are. Jesus <laughs> want Peter. Severally, severally. It was so, it was so, it was so, it was so clear. Practically everybody knew. Do you know that some people here knew what you were doing last night? Nothing that is secret that will not be exposed. Heaven is looking at your record right now. And they said, this one is supposed to jump up now and say, save me Lord Jesus. But he or she refused. God has sent me to somebody here today. If you refuse, it's, you are on your own. Insolence. <laughs> hey, you better, you better give your life to Jesus. For those who are online, just say, Lord Jesus, and if you are here, you want to say it, you have a choice now. I've delivered the message that the Lord has asked me to deliver. I've delivered the message that the Lord has asked me to deliver. Particularly those that are physically close to Jesus, but they are spiritually far from him. Danger is coming. Danger is coming. So say after me, Lord Jesus. I'm talking of those who want to give their life to Jesus now. And if you know, you know you are physically close to Jesus, but in your fruit and your attitude, you are far. You can also say this, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Please wash me with your precious blood. And Lord, I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Have mercy on me. Write my name in the book of life that I will not go back again in the name of Jesus. As you have confessed the Lord as your Savior today, I pray for you. You will never go back in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, Jesus, will wipe away all your sins and write your name in the book of life in the name of Jesus. And his name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Can we please say? Share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.